if you've ever seen children at Christmas, uh, it's kind of a, a running joke in most families, or in many families, that uh, the child is looking for some really expensive toy, uh, some doll, pram, Lego, computer, whatever it is. And then when it arrives, a box, right? And then the contents of the box gets left to one side and they can play with the box all day and the following day and make a, like a fort out of the box and they can make a slide out of the box and they can make a robot suit out of the box. And they can do all sorts of interesting things with the box and it's 600 euro contents are kind of left to one side, you know? And it's very interesting how as adults, I mean, uh, I know I use this, these kind of ideas a lot, but as adults, we can be quite similar. We're striving for some goal, right? Something, if I attain this, I will be happy. If I get a degree, if I get married, if I have kids, if I live in a big house, if I'm rich, if I, have, if I lose 17 stone, if I, whatever it is. Um, if, if I'm just, if I just have, have some of these things or all of these things, I will be happy. Okay, and what's really, really interesting is then people who att often attain those goals discover that no, nah, there's still something missing. There's still something more. There's still uh, a gap, a hole, a void. But I thought that after all this effort, like after putting in all of this time and money and maybe even physical pain, like if, if, you're, if you want to get big and buff or if you want to lose weight and you're training and sweating and all of the men, just like it takes dedication and time and pain and effort and then you get there well this isn't as good as I thought <laughs> you know there's some there's like something more or some, there's something missing what really struck me in, in today's readings is is the psalm cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth serve the Lord with glad gladness come before him singing for joy now it doesn't say Cry out with joy to the Lord because we have received everything we asked for. As in, in the sense that we have been blessed with money and wealth and power and good looks. Okay? Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth. It's just there's such confidence that the Lord is the source of our joy. And that everything else, while it may help, it's never going to be in the source of our joy. Now, obviously, we should do and do what we can to alleviate suffering and pain and poverty. And there is no uh, NGO in the world that has done more for third world countries than, than the Catholic Church. Just so you know that, that's actually statistically true. Just so you know that uh, we're not all just kind of stuck in this kind of spiritual realm and forget about the practical and tangible needs of people, of course. I mean, Catholic education, universities, <clears throat> charities, everything from digging wells, building churches, building shelters, orphanages, the whole lot uh, in third world countries. Um, we've, we've been doing that for, for quite some time, uh, often under the radar and definitely uh, away from the attention of the, the media. But so we take care of people's practical and spiritual needs as well, of course. But ultimately, ultimately, the greatest good is God himself. And that we must never lose sight of. The greatest good is God himself. Because God never runs out. We never get tired of God. We never get so uh, bored of God or complacent. Or God will never become ordinary if we really know him. So in, in heaven, like we will constantly discover and rediscover ever greater depths of love for God. And his depths of love for us for all eternity. And that's how heaven can be heaven. Because anything else, any other pleasure, anything, no matter how good it is, will eventually run out and we'll get bored of it and we'll get tired of it. And, you know, you want, I want to go to Abu Dhabi. It's absolutely classy. I've got this ski slope in a hotel, in a shopping center, in a shopping center. So you can go skiing. It's like 36 degrees outside and you can go skiing down a slope. It must sound amazing. And then you go there and it's fantastic. And then you get there and inside the thing, it's actually kind of cold in here, isn't it? And then you're skiing down and then you fall. You face plant into the glass on the side. And you go, oh, that, that was less than comfortable. And you ski off again. You realize you're Irish, so you can't ski for your life. <laughs> Right. And so you get to the bottom and go, okay, well, that was, that was fun. And then, okay, next. Do you know, I mean, after all that effort I have getting to Abu Dhabi and sl uh, skiing in, in a desert. Um, okay. So what else is there? You know, just immediate, like, within, within an hour, we're bored of it. It's like, God, that's not heaven, that is not God. God is the complete opposite, like, where he actually satisfies our needs and will do so for all eternity. I love the, the, the line from the, the prophet Nehemiah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
the Lord's joy strengthens me. The, lo- the joy of the Lord is my strength. Or uh, in Psalm 62, which we sing uh, on occasion here, only in God is my soul at rest. From him comes my salvation. Only in God is my soul at rest. Now, do we believe that? Do we? Because we, 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 can, we can say it, we can preach about it, and we can meditate it, but do we actually believe that only in God is my soul at rest? <clears throat> there may be a tendency, even in some Christian denominations, to talk about the, uh, the so-called prosperity gospel, that if we follow God, we'll be blessed abundantly here. Now, yes, we will be blessed abundantly here, but it all depends on what you mean by blessing. We will be blessed, yes, but we'll be, be wealthy in the eyes of the world, <clears throat> maybe, but maybe not. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. That if you, know, if you pray lots and put God in the center of your life, you'll have lots of money. That's, that's not the case. It's never been the case. Look at history. I mean, saints, generally speaking, are poor. So this, the prosperity gospel idea, doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it, it's not scriptural either. Uh, the Lord will bless us for following him, absolutely. But remember, this blessing... Any blessing is coming from God, who is our Father, who wants our greatest good. So if he blesses us with money, and with that money, I become selfish, arrogant, self-centered, proud, unfaithful maybe, because now I don't need to work anymore, so I've got so much free time, I get bored, and then I start looking around. Now what else I can do to excite my life a little, and voila, in mar- marital infidelity. So maybe the greatest blessing for me is actually not so much poverty, but just kind of ticking over, money-wise. That actually might be the greatest blessing for me because it stops me from falling into vice. So we will be blessed here, but not necessarily with cash. It, it, it doesn't work that way because, remember, God is our greatest good. So anything that gets us to him, great. Anything that keeps us from him, isn't. So it, it, this, this, this works. The, the Lord's plan works. But do I, do I believe it? Like, do I, I believe that, 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 that the Lord is enough? That the Lord can satisfy my needs? That he can actually fulfill all of my desires? And that's another issue we can have at times where we think God fulfills our spiritual desires. So our desires for kind of heaven and all that kind of thing. But my, all of my other de- desires, like so the desire to be wanted, to be loved, to be cherished, the desire to have security, the desire to uh, be affirmed, all those kind of things. Do I believe like, that God can provide for those too? Now, he can also do so through people, of course. But do I believe that God will provide? Do I or don't I? And these are the kind of things that, that when we look into, into our own souls, we can kind of struggle a bit with because I go, well... Um, yeah, I, I do believe, I believe you're good, I believe you're there, I believe you're powerful, I believe you're maybe even father, which is a great step forward. Uh, I believe you're father. But ultimately, when it comes to my career, my health, and my happiness, uh, I have to do the, all of that on my own. That's a mistake. That's, that's not true. It's always collaboration. Collaboration. I work with God. So it's not all me, and another, of course, exaggeration is that it's all him. As in, if I'm not happy, well, it's God's fault. He hasn't done anything for me. It doesn't, no, we, we work together. That's, that's, that's another, a topic for another day, how to, how, you know, just discernment. Like, discernment isn't all me, nor is it all God. It's, it's us working together, us working together. So do I believe that the Lord can fulfill all of my desires? And that I can, I can rest in him and be at peace. That I can have him at the center of my life and experience a joy that nothing else can give me. Do I believe that? Or am I sitting down feeling sorry for myself that I don't have X, Y, or Z? In, like this is, this is reality, this is spirituality, like really, and reality, uh, they, should be, they should go hand in hand. Because if I really believe that the Lord is enough for me. That the Lord can fulfill my every desire. Then this psalm, this psalm becomes my life, Psalm 99. It can actually become my daily experience. And you can sometimes see this uh, with people who are poor, are living 
very simple conditions, or if you've ever been abroad, maybe to third world countries, and you can see just incredible joy in kids as they kick around their number of t-shirts, right, wrapped up with a bit of string around them to make a football. And they're kicking that rag, raggy, dirty mess uh, as if they're, I can't think of any footballer's name, Ronaldo, as if they're Ronaldo. You know what I mean? And they're having the crack and they're loving it. And, but they're poor. Maybe they're richer than us in the things that matter. So Lord, we ask you to lift up, raise up a new joy in our hearts, a new joy that we can follow you, a new joy that, and confidence that you provide for our every need, and that when we have you, we have everything. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal is his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. <laughs>